this is an urgent warning that might already be too late. It's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop. It's not the yield curve inversion that kills you, it's the unwinding that does. Once the Fed is forced to cut, it's already going to be a hard landing, and the Fed needs to do more. So NVIDIA has dropped roughly 20% again. Is it a buy this time? Welcome back everyone to the Audacious Money Witch channel where we talk about investing and trading and a lot of fun things. Uh, is that a good idea? Are we gonna have this? <laughs> <laughs> It's time to get out now as governments just initiated crisis mode. As you're about to see, when governments do that, it means we're at the beginning phases of what could be a massive crash in the global stock market. We have Canada cutting rates for the second time in a row. Now the policy rate is only 4.5%. We also have China unexpectedly cuts one-year policy rate by the most since 2020. This is an unexpected cut. This is a warning to the global economy that something serious is wrong. Why do you think Alibaba stock still trades at the basement price of $76 a share? Why do you think a stock like Estee Lauder and Burberry are tanking? Demand for luxury goods across the globe has weakened dramatically, especially in China, one of Estee Lauder and Burberry's largest markets. It's not just these two. LVMH also posted disappointing earnings, where sales plunged 14% in China. Let me know if you're interested in a video about luxury brands like LVMH and Burberry. Anyways, back to the dire reality the Chinese economy is facing. The central bank decreased the rate of the medium-term lending facility by 20 basis points to 2.3%. The cut followed the PBOC's trim of a seven-day reversal repo led by 10 basis points on Monday. The Monetary Authority has recently downplayed the MLF in favor of the short-term rate they guide markets in a way more similar to global peers. The issue here is, of course, this means that we will likely be expecting to see the yuan crash. We're likely to see the Chinese economy crash. But what does this mean for the global equities? Why are they cutting rates? Well, when the stock market crashes, the wealthy people's wealth effect is taking a hit. People will cut their spending in a major way. What they don't realize, as I'll show you, spending is going to get cut anyways. And there's nothing they can do to stop a crash in stocks. It's basically a coordinated effort across all key interest rates to ease monetary policy. It's worth highlighting this round of easing kicked off with a seven-day reverse repo, which may be a signal of its future role as the main policy rate. Well, that, it means, is when the government cuts rates, well, it means they're soon going to cut them again. Like Canada, if you think they're going to keep it at 4.5%, not a chance. They are under pressure in panic mode because PBOC string of rate cuts underscore authority growing urgency to support growth. And there's the bottom line I told you before that they would be forced to cut rates despite the fact that the yuan was weakening. Money was flowing out of the country. They would need to do something to stop it. Now they're in panic mode which came in is worse than expected in the second quarter as faltering consumer spending more than offset an export boom. Of course, it's all about the consumer in every country. And what do we hear from these policymakers that the services sector is going to boom? I'm going to show you why they're not and why what's happening in China is happening everywhere else. Look at Disney stock, Nike stock, Lululemon stock. All these are global companies. They are consumer discretionary stocks. This is clear evidence showing consumers are done spending. Their credit cards are maxed out. Look at Visa stock. They are saying softness in macro trends. Visa underwhelming third quarter revenue. 
stoking concerns about slowing growth in customer spending and casting shadow on the U.S. payments industry. It also affected my block stock. The results underscore the challenges the industry is facing after several quarters of growth as inflation and high borrowing costs prompt a large section of customers to cut back on purchases. While wage growth loses steam, shares of Visa fell nearly 4% and wiped out the gain they have seen this year. This is the reason why Canada's central bank has cut not once, but twice already. It's because Canada's consumers have loaded up on debt, and they soon have to refinance their mortgage at a much higher rate. Historically, the stock market starts to fall dramatically when the Fed starts to cut rates. It's when the Fed is thinking about it and the market is hoping for it that we go up. Which is what we've seen over the last 12 months, but reality is that we get a market that falls when they start cutting. Once the Fed is forced to cut, it's already going to be a hard landing and the Fed needs to do more. So Nvidia has dropped roughly 20% again. Is it a buy this time? Last time I made over 70% on NVIDIA in just two months time by buying up this 20% dip. This time though, I will just show you this. I want to show you a monthly chart of the NASDAQ 100 and I'm going to take a parallel. We're going to take the low from March of 2020 and we're going to connect it to the bear market lows of 2022. And I want to show you this parallel trend line. A perfect parallel up looks at the high bull market of 2021 and look at what we tagged on the charts just in the past month at the all-time high we tagged that trend line now as the technician of the charts so it makes sense if you extrapolate that out that we should see a big sell-off in the nasdaq if we take the high and we drop it down and that would be about 35 percent move if NASDAQ is crashing 35%, we will see NVIDIA crash probably more than 40%. There was a signal on the chart at the semi SOX ETF high that I have never seen in my life before. And it is one of the most bearish signals ever. What you got here, this is called a reversal engulfing candle where the chart again, basically a candle opens above the previous one's high and it closes below the low of the previous one. What we got here is that we got a massive dual headed reversal engulfing candle, pretty much a double top. Plus double engulfing candles, that is one of the most bearish signals I've ever gotten on the charts that told me a major downside was coming. We are at the peak of travel season and why are we seeing oil prices under pressure? Why are we seeing Dr. Copper is moving lower? Again, all the signs are pointing in the same direction, which is we are going into a recession as we see yield curves steepening after inversions. This is a pretty accurate recession sign. It should not be overlooked. Just a reminder of where we are in the yield curve cycle. It's not the fall that kills you. It's the sudden stop. It's not the yield curve inversion that kills you, it's the unwinding that does. Once the two and 10 year yield flip to normal, after a record long yield curve inversion, the stock market will free fall. This is proven over and over again throughout history. The two and 30 year just flipped after a record long inversion. If you don't trust yield curve inversion and increasing unemployment rate, and you believe the economy has landed softly, then I present to you the campaign sales recession indicator and it's flashing red. Lastly, the Buffett indicator is screaming overvalued. The Buffett indicator expresses the value of the US stock market in terms of the size of the US economy. If the stock market value is growing much faster than the actual economy, then it may be in a bubble. Right now, the ratio of 197% is approximately 59% above the historical trend line, suggesting that the stock market is so overvalued and a crash is coming.